Hello, well in this film I'm going to show you how to repair the top tension unit uh, in this particular case on a Singer 201K but actually the principles are very similar for any machine so top tension it's the one the knob you twiddle to get the right sort of tension when you're sewing and these are governed by a little spring I'll show you some close-ups in a minute there's a little spring and before you know it they can get slightly bent or they can just lose their flex. So this machine is something like 70, 80 years old and I'll show you close up but this one's lost its joy of life. So I'm going to show you the how to, how to replace it. It's fairly straightforward. Well usually the first sign that anything's not quite right is your stitches don't come out quite as you want so in this case they're a little bit uneven and it's the unevenness as much because if it was just um, they were good on top but you know say loose on the bottom or something like that you'd know just to change your tension knob but the other telltale sign apart from uneven stitches is actually to watch this little spring because this is a bit we're going to replace so if I sew with this so this is the tension spring for top tension and you can see it's not really moving if I push it down it may work for a little bit no, it's actually sticking up there. Now sometimes you can just squeeze them, tweak them, and they get going. But I think it's one of those things, you've got to use your common sense a bit. If you've got an old machine, then just see how bouncy the spring is. So it's worth taking this unit apart and then having another look at the spring. So here's the replacement spring. That's what it looks like. And I'm going to fit that next. They're designed with, you can see, a big mass of spring behind. And the purpose of that is to make it really sort of like flexible and going back easily into place. But as they get old, they tend to lose their bounce, <laughs> probably like we all do. And they cease to work as well. I think that's what's happening with this one. So I'll take it apart. First of thing to do, first of all, is to turn your machine off. And the order is just if you hold the components, oops, you have to push this number dial ring back in and you take the bits off one by one. So it's that adjusting screw, there's the number dial ring, there's a little finger washer that has a little tiny finger on it that points forward all the time, a beehive spring aptly named as it looks a bit like a beehive. I love these old names. And then you've got another light cup washer with a plus minus on it. And then you've got your like attention discs and holders. So pull all of those out. I should have unthreaded it actually first to make it a bit easier. And out comes one arm of your spring and there out comes the spring itself. This one doesn't look too bad, but it's just a bit, it's lost its bounce back. It's bouncing, but just not as much as a new one. Otherwise it looks quite good. So, take your replacement spring. You'll see on the inside of your replacement spring, the end of the spring curls inward with a little ledge. And that actually sits on the cog in the tooth. And the best position for this spring when you're reinstalling a new one is to have the springy bit, the arm if you like, pointing downwards. So tease it back in and it sits in there, just slides in, and you'll see I've got the springy arm bit down at six o'clock, so like that, it's pointing downwards. So then reassembly is just the reverse. Make sure your tension discs are nice and clean. So you'll need to carefully lift that arm out without bending the spring. Tension disc. 
Oops. Tension disc. Now make sure with your tension discs that you get them the right way. You want to have it so that there's a gap between the two discs when you put them on. So the way I've done this, uh, those two edges, there's a gap just in there. If you had them the other way around, there wouldn't be a gap and you wouldn't be able to get your thread in. Then goes the cover washer. And with this, there's a little pointy arm going out on that. That needs to engage in a little hole in the machine casing. I need to raise my camera a tiny bit then. Okay, so this arm needs to go into that hole there. It's going over it goes. Engage it in there and then you can put that arm, the rest of that spring on. Okay, so the spring's still at six o'clock at the moment. You've got the two tension washers and the cover done. And reassemblies the same order of components going back on. So your plus and minus. So the little adjustment sitting line in the middle plus this side minus this side. So as I'm looking at it at the moment, the plus is on the right, the minus is on the left. Then your beehive spring. Now with your beehive spring, make it so that the lower bit of the spring that sticks out most is in the lower position. So the spring at the bottom and it's then more recessed on the top bit of spring. So the spring sticks out if you like underneath. And then comes your little finger washer. Now with your finger washer, you want that little finger there to be pointing forwards, pointing at you. And the reason for that is it needs to engage in the next component, which is the little numbered wheel. And when you come to put the numbered wheel in, you've got like zero, one, two, three for your tension. When you assemble it, put it so that it's just one side of the zero. So I'm going to put it in so that it's facing number one at the top centre there. Engage your little washer with the little finger hook pointing forwards on it. And then engage the final screw on. And to get this one on, because it's got a little stud on the back, you have to push everything in and screw it on. Now I suggest when you start, you just start with it so it's screwed in so that it's roughly level with the little stud it goes on. Something like that. Then, final bit, is get your tension spring and carefully bring it round. So I've just brought that tension spring up so it's then over the little side hook there. Now what you should find now, and you may need to jiggle this a little bit, but do you see how that's now returning? As I put pressure with my thumb on. That's what you want it to do, because it will then take up the slack on the thread. Oh, just to add that I say start at the six o'clock position with the spring, but actually if you find you've done it and it's not then got enough tension, start at say the four o'clock position and then bend it, you know, have it spring round so it's under more tension. But the six o'clock is a good starting point. So just threading up. Okay, I'm gonna use a fairly thick bit of leather actually and just pop that in and see how it does it. Do you see here how 
the spring is moving and it's going back to position so it is taking up the tension and let's have a look at the stitch quality yeah it's pretty nice so um there's the stitching and I said it's quite heavy stuff so it's quite a good test for a machine like this that's going quite evenly and quite well all in all so there you are that's the little tension spring fairly easily remedied if you find you've got a still stitchy problem but that will get you back into where you want to be so that's my tension problems now sorted so fairly easy things to sort out if you feel your stitches aren't quite right you've tried the other obvious things then looking at that spring and replacing it job done and that particular machine is the Singer 201K, so the other day I showed you um, the aluminium version, the later version. That's the cast iron version, it's quite nice, it's older, uh, quite a nice heavy flywheel on it. But I'll, I'll give you a run through a bit more about the capabilities sometime. Okay, thanks very much for watching then, bye bye.